Derivatives work great when you've got two variables, y and x, or any other variables you want. But what happens when you've got more than one variable? And that's going to happen a lot in this course. We're never going to, we're not usually going to be, have the luxury of just, you know, one thing causes one other thing. There's often going to be multiple variables that affect something. And the idea of derivatives carries over to this context pretty naturally too. And for this, we use the idea of partial derivatives. So this video is just going to introduce the notation and sort of explain what a partial derivative is. So imagine you've got an equation where y is instead of equal to just f of x, it's equal to f of x and z. So two different variables affect it. And an example of something like this might be something as simple as y equals x plus z. It could be equal to something much more complicated like 3x squared times z uh, plus uh, x times the natural log of z. I'm just making these up. But anyway, these, these are the kinds of things that could occur, and we actually know, have all the tools we need to figure these out. So if you're going to take the derivative, you want to know the instantaneous slope at a point. Okay, And the way this usually works is we think of like if you have x and z as two variables that can change, the de partial derivative is going to be looking at how y is affected by just one of those variables on its own. So the other one is set aside. Usually, if you were to actually calculate a derivative, you'd have to pick some number for z. Okay, so what it means is like at a particular point, if you were to go along the x direction, how would y change? Would it change a lot or little? Or alternatively, you could say let's go in the z direction, uh, you know, move z a little bit up or down and see how that affects y. We're going to do one or the other, but never both. And so with partial derivatives, we have to specify, uh, it's much more important to specify which variable we're taking the derivative with respect to, okay? So these w's and d's are because I picked my hotkeys stupidly. I'll change them at some point. All right, so if I want to take the derivative of y and see how it is affected by small changes in x, uh, instead of writing dy dx, we're not going to use this notation. We're going to invent something new, the partial derivative. It's like a backward 6 of y with respect to x. Okay, so that's this is what we say: the partial uh, derivative. I had to calc think how I spell words for a minute. Partial derivative of y with respect to x, and usually I'll write with respect to as just wrt. Okay, so I could also write this notation and that would be the partial derivative of y with respect to z. Okay, so this is the main way that we're going to write this, but there are alternatives. Uh, you can't just do like this anymore because what does that prime mean? Does it mean with respect to x or y? So instead what we do is we actually just write a little x or y down below. Or I mean an x or z. I guess I don't need to say or. These both mean the same thing. I could also write f, z, x, z. And then last but not least, sometimes you'll also see a number representing sort of the which of the arguments we're talking about here. So if I want to talk about x, uh, I've run out of space here. And that's the first argument, so I have a little 1 there. And if I want to talk about the second one, I do a little 2 to represent the second argument, which is z. So these are all equivalent ways of saying the partial derivative of y with respect to x. Okay, so. In the next video, now that we've got the notation down, we'll talk about how you actually work with these things. And it turns out there's just one trick. 